Hi, this is M, and today, or I should say right now, uh, this is going to be a little longer than a couple of the other videos that I already did today because I'm actually going to uh, show you me placing flowers on the paper. And so there's a whole process that I haven't shown yet that I'm going to go ahead and do. So as always, if, if you're bored, just uh, fast forward. And well, let's get started. What I'm going to start with because this will probably be my probably be my last one for today, is I'm going to get this plate ready. I'm going to spray a little vinegar water. Again, this is a 40-50% vinegar to water solution. I already cut some paper to size. <clears throat> I'm going to spray the back. This is a 8 by 10. And I've kind of laid out how I can maximize this space. Again, I put a little uh, splatter on the on the front side. This is a five by seven. I screwed up. I was going to use this is that Ranger Delusions. It's way too intense. So this will be this will be the back. So uh, let's see how they had that gone. This was going to be had room for this to be here and this to be here. I'm going to keep everything on the plate and we're getting pretty close. Oh no, I'm wrong. This this was going to go over here. No wonder I... Then we're going to do some bookmarks. I'm just going to do two bookmarks. And then I figured this we could do some sort of tag or something with that. Okay, so that is... The lay of the land for what we're going to do. Make sure everybody's got enough room to breathe. All right. One thing I know I want to do is rows. So I'm going to snip off at the bud part just. Up, uh, right there and I'm going to open it up a little bit and I'm going to spray it with some vinegar water because I'm going to see what they part. Uh, let's do the 8 by 10 with rose. So let's do a main master rose motif and that's okay if this comes out because we're not pressing perfect petals we just want to impart shape and color. So we'll put that back down. Let's see if we have another one that we can open up. Yeah, that one looks like it. Cut that off. That wasn't the one I was going for. Where was it? It's this one. The, the heat press is heating up. It's at 266 now. I have it set at 325. Okay. I think we can go ahead and do this, even though it's it's getting a little spent. It's not about it's just about importing color. Uh, let's uh, get those back down. Let's go ahead and do a little cluster here. Now let's do some bud formations. And because these are so thick, and we learned from the hydrangea that I can't close the lid if it's too thick, uh, I can't cinch it down, so I'm going to cut these in half. And then we'll go ahead and lay them. This has got all kinds of... Eh, that wasn't very happy. Let's do this side. Make a butt out of this one. All right. And then we will just take a few petals. And I'm just going to, I'm going to just struzel, I guess, for lack of a better way, struzel some around. All right. Okay, now I've got some leaves. This, these are funked out leaves. I've got some better leaves back here. Let's go ahead and lay some leaves down. And I 
think I'll chop this one up a little bit so get some around like this. Maybe put one here. Put one here. Got a little piece here. So I think that looks okay. We're now I'm going to take the top. I don't know if I want to put anything else in there or not. We should just keep it simple. And just focus on the roses. This is some weird, I don't know what that stuff is, but probably won't make a difference since we're smashing everything anyway. All right, now I want to make... both sides of this paper. Let's put that on top. We'll just keep it simple. That way we'll know whether or not the um, roses impart anything. Now I'm going to do the 5x7. Oh, I've got so much stuff in this basket. I really want to see what these uh, these are, uh, what are these? Moonstruck Coreopsis. I'd really like to know what they do. Uh, let's, let's set that down as a, we'll do it on here as a 5x7. Uh, okay. Then let's do a few. Can you see me down here? Let's do a few open face. Now, if these do like some of the other kinds of Coreopsis I did, they, they, they turn, the other ones that I tried, different, different uh, genus, species, or whatever they call it, they turned orangish. It was really cool. Let's rip off some of these leaves. These are beautiful. Very, very wispy. See, do we need any more flowers on here? Um, I don't know. Which side do we want to be the front? Maybe this will be the front. Since everything's laying that way, let's, let's make this the front. Okay. So you just kind of have to figure out how you want to do your arrangement, and of course it's going to change and move around a little bit when you smash it down and it does its thing. But I think we will leave that like that, see what happens. I'm going to put this on top of there, at least I'm going to try to. Let's get the cover for this. Uh, more little greeneries there. All right, back to spraying this. And trying to get this over here and get this on top of here. And then putting this down I'm going to roll it down so I can try to get those to stay open. Okay. I don't. Now we're just going to do some potpourri. We're not, oh, oh. <laughs> I want to see what this does. This is some sort of. I don't know. I've had it in the garden for about 20 years. I have no idea. Can't remember what it is. But it presses well, holds its color, and it also dries in silica gel really well. Let's do this as a bookmark. Let's set that there. All right. And its leaves are, it's got these really gnarly leaves. There's not really much room for leaves, so we'll just set a few little greeneries around the perf the edges because I don't want to ex obstruct the uh, the actual flower 
All right. So let's get a bookmark and put that down. Now, this next bookmark, these next things, we're just going to, this is a um, begonia. I just want to see if begonias will tempt the paper, so we're just going to do some petals. So these are going to just be test petals to see what it parts. This is a wax leaf begonia. I'll do a petal there. And a petal down here. And I want to try, <laughs> I've got all these flowers that maybe I'll have to do another round. Oh, I've got these, these, I want to see what these do. This is a bulb and I have no idea what, if anything, they will do. So we'll try that. And I want to see if <clears throat> this is, uh, uh, what do they call that? I'll think of it, I'll think of it a minute. Let's put that down here with this. Get different colors going on. No, not wax begonia, but something else. And then, then these are those uh, kind of coppery biddens. I know they'll work. I'll just do this with petals. What else do we want to put on there? I got some of these reddish color namesias. Or pinkish color, whatever they are. They're like a, what do they call them? Monkey flowers? I want to see if they impart any color. So we'll find out about that. Well, I'm not sure I can do much more on this thing. Okay, well, let's spray it. <clears throat> Hopefully this imparts color. What can we put on top of there just in case it doesn't so we can have something exciting on there? I brought in some. This is a, a Stilby. Let's, let's lay some Stilby down. That's probably about all we're going to get on there. All right, let's get the rest of the... Okay. All right, let's, let's do it. So I just wanted to show you how I was doing the arrangements. I might have taken a little bit more time if it wasn't on camera because I tend to be a little bit obsessive. Now we really need to get these wet because they've dried off quite a bit. <clears throat> Again, this is watercolor paper that has been primed in alum, alum solution, about one teaspoon to a big cup of water. Be careful I don't burn myself. Are we up to temp? Yeah, we're at 325 now, so we're good to go. All right. Move my scissors out of the way. I can't, I can't close the lid on this. Yeah, I can. Okay. <laughs> there goes the action. 
or should I say the mess. This cleans up really well though, uh, easily. Of course, the Teflon mat, I just I just take the Teflon mats up to the sink with a little scrubber sponge with, and some hot soapy water and it just they just clean right off and then I hang them over the towel or the, what do you call it, the shower curtain rack to dry. And then this I just bring down a little bowl with some warm water and wipe the the mat and the top plate and, and they they wipe real easy. So the cleanup, even though it looks like a big mess, is very simple. But that's why I want to do all this mess now all at once so that I only have to clean it up once today. Now that's been a minute. And I see these are very dry now, so we have to put more water down because, oops, oh yeah, okay. What's coming up? Oh, oh, this leaf is stuck. This leaf was stuck. Uh, what? Let's move that whole, you know, the whole paper moved it on itself when it went down. Okay, let's get that leaf sticking. That kind of stayed in place. See what other things have moved. Nothing else moved too much. Okay. Well, I got to spray more water on it. That's the that's the secret. Is just keeping everything really wet. Well, secret's not the right word. It's not like it's a big secret. It just that's that's what makes it in part. It's. Uh, whatever dye that the flowers might impart. Okay. I probably will have to do one more round. I don't know if I'll film it or not because I've got all these really beautiful flowers. I really want to see what these, uh, what are these? Marigolds? Pot marigolds? And these turn really pretty. And then I know that uh, Viola works for the most part, so I definitely at least want to do something with these. See what see what they do. <clears throat> All right, we're getting some action here now. You can tell when things are starting to happen because the back of the paper will start to discolor, or color. I guess just it's not discolor because I want it, but. It's, uh, you know, so that's when something's starting to, to go on. You definitely don't want to t take anything apart until that. And I'd like to try to turn these over, but I'm not quite ready yet. Oops. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can turn them over if they won't, if they're going to stick together enough. All right, they will. Let's turn it over. This one really moved a lot on me. Oh, look, the blue's coming through. Yay, okay. Now the roses feel like maybe, hopefully, <clears throat> they won't shift. Be careful. Turn quick. Okay. All right, let's do this side now. Getting some color. our top tip one back on. Down. I'm standing back so I'm not breathing in the fumes. Take a look. Mmm, that's starting to get good. See how you can see the that. All right, let's spray some more water on. You'd be surprised, even though this is covered with Teflon, how dry that gets after the heat presses down on it for. 
25, 30 seconds. I'm look at something. Okay, I, it didn't look like much was happening here, but I guess it is. So I was going to put something else under there if we didn't have any activity going on, but we do. Okay, let's do this side again, then we'll do the other side again, then we'll see if we can be done. As I've said in the other videos, so you've heard me say it a couple of times, once you start to peel it apart, you're done. So I'd rather steam it a little too much and ruin all the efforts that we've already gone through to set everything up and get to where we are now. So that's been about 20 seconds. Now we're about 30 seconds. All right, so let's turn them over one more time. And maybe we can call it good. Now, this is a cement floor that I've got down here, although I do have some paper down on it and some throw rugs, but I'm not really worried about the mess here. So you want to do it somewhere where, you know, you can make a mess and you can uh, open the window or a door or something. Not that there's much air flowing through here today. It's pretty still. There's not really any wind. Good and wet. Very wet, very wet, very wet. Let's see. Okay. Standing back while the volcano erupts. seconds. I'm going to get close to 30. We'll wait for the steam to slow down a little bit. Because <clears throat> you got to figure when the steam starts slowing down, the paper's getting pretty dry. Okay, let's peek and see if we want to be done. Well, the ones that look like they really have a lot of color, so we'll start with them, is this, oh wow, okay, <laughs> ooh, I'm going to have to take the wash it off to see what's the, what's left residue of the flowers versus, um, versus what's on the, uh, Every one of those flowers that we put down, the, uh, what was the one I was thinking of that I couldn't remember the name? Well, we did wax begonia, and uh, I think it's on the tip of my tongue. But all of them left color. Look at that, the whole thing is just really colorful. Oh, that's beautiful. Vidden. It was uh, Vidden. Um, the wax begonia, that's the wax begonia, and even the, uh, oh, think of it in a minute, really did well. 
So those are all keepers. I'm very impressed. This is a beautiful background for, uh, what, you know, what you might be thinking, well, what are you going to do with these? Well, some of them, if they turn out really well, you can just stand them on their own. Don't do anything with them uh, except for frame them like they are. Um, you can do pressed flower arrangements on them. A lot of people do doodles or zen doodles. Uh, people that journalize in notebooks, you could maybe put a piece of, um, uh, like a little little extra card on the on the back and and do um, use it for a journal a journal journaling card depending upon the size that's gorgeous once I wash this off and get some of these little flakes off of there it'll be even better I'll show you close up here in more in a minute but let's take a look at some other things how did this start to do well they, it did a little bit, and the uh, Stilbys did a little bit. That would probably be, this is subdued enough that it would make more for a, um, a background for a little press flower arrangement. If This isn't bookmark size for me, but it would be a nice background for bookmark. I'm, the Stilbys are interesting. Actually, the Stilbys are one you might not want to rinse them off in the sink because this is the texture of the Stilby. Once, once you wash this away, you won't have that definition. So you can decide, you know, maybe you want to keep this, uh, not wash this off. See, these things, this is still part of the Stilby that's still on there, the, the darker flex. But if you did a whole Stilby arrangement, we had some Stilby in the middle, you might not want to wash those darker flex off. You may want to just press them into the paper so that they stay and they don't go anywhere. That was the uh, still be in the buds, and then yeah, okay. This did what I thought they were gonna do. They went orange. Those were those um, yellow coreopsis. They go orange, and coreopsis hold their color for a long time. So I've got to think that these would hold their color. Uh, you heard me talk in other videos. If you go back and look at the playlist where I talk more about, you know, my thoughts on fading versus what I do about protecting them and stuff. Um, it, and if something, like I say, holds their color naturally in the pressed flower for a long time, I've got to figure that these would probably do okay. But you never want to put anything like this in the sunshine. But even fine art, you don't want to, you know, put it in a sunny... Super sunny spot. Okay. So that's pretty bright orange. Let's take a look at this one. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. I love this one. Ah. Uh. Okay, <laughs> I have a whole bunch of them out in the yard flowering right now. I've got to either use them or lose them. Yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. The back's even cool. And, uh, and there's even enough color left in them that I could press it dry and use it as a pressed flower, which I will. I'm going to set this aside and press it dry. And use it as a pressed flower. Now, do we think this is good enough to... Take a part. I want to do this one more time. I don't know why. I just do. So let's let's do this one more time. It just feels like this needs, needs one more round. I have to do these. I just have to know what they turn out like. Okay. I'll do it one more time on the other side and then we'll look at it and we'll consider it done. Yeah, well, it will be done whether we think whether it's done or not because 
one in there. These are uh, rose, uh, ro bush roses off a of cl climbing rose off a of climbing rose bush, and there's a bunch of them on there right now. And I did a video where I uh, talked about and showed do using the heat press to press and dry for pressed flowers because um, show you because when I try to press them traditionally, this is what happens. I can't get them through the press traditionally, but when I use the heat press on a low temperature, like 190 or something, I could get them through and without discoloring. So to me, that's very important, and that now I can use some of those flowers or roses to make some pressed flower arrangements that aren't brown. All right, let's call it done. I'm sure you're probably tired of watching me mess with this. Let's see. Are roses a success? The leaves do really well. Look at how nice those leaves are. I think that uh, they're not super defined, but I think it makes a nice background for, you know, you could do a pressed flower rose arrangement, or, or, or if you're a painter or watercolorist, you could do something uh, more defined, or if you'd like to doodle. I think this would be great for the doodlers because you could go in and, and outline things and doodle on them, and you have a wonderful background with some imagery already there, which uh, <clears throat> I might try doing with uh, some of this stuff. Okay, let me wipe this off a little bit and then I'll hold it up to the camera closer so you can see, although before I wash them. But at least you'll be able to, to tell, you know, how, how if they imparted uh, a reasonable color. Okay. Let me get a board. So here's the rose. Um, how well the leaves do. I would say this is probably the back side of that uh, thing because I had the, the front of the roses laying down on this other piece. And then once this is washed off, but you can kind of tell they're roses. And then before these are washed, these are the, these were those um, those uh, Coreopsis. And when you're making your arrangements, you know, maybe you just want to do the Coreopsis and not, see, I would have preferred to have this be more defined in here, have this, uh, this petal have been uh, unobstructed, so to speak. But that's part of the learning process. See, this isn't obstructed, but I probably would have wanted the center one, the main focal point, to be unobstructed. But that Live and learn. That's that's how you know how you want to make your arrangements. This one, oh, is probably this is just um, way cool. Look at how beautiful that is. Okay, try to get it close without blurring out. Look at the look at the shading and the colors in that. I just I think this is just outstanding. Really, really happy with that. And then, now these were all those petals, albeit this isn't washed yet, and there's still some residue on there. But look at how colorful those are. Just, wow. God, what was that? What was that? Um, mm. Senior moments where your brain doesn't want to operate very well. And then these, and then this. Okay. Uh, that'll be it for, for this uh, little thing.
thing. I am probably going to turn the camera off and come back on and just do those other ones. So if you want to come back and just do a fast forward to the end and see how these other flowers that I'm going to do come out, uh, I've got to get them done while I've got this mess going and I don't want to waste the flowers. So I mean, I want to know how they turn out. So anyway, again, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you down the line.